Welcome back to Organic Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about an awfully challenging topic in organic chemistry that most students hate, and that is the Grignard reaction. All right, so first of all, the Grignard reaction is difficult to understand in terms of predicting a product or if you're doing a synthesis, um, what reagents will you need. Um, it's useful, however, for forming carbon-carbon bonds. It's one of the few reactions that we'll actually see over the course of all of organic chemistry that you can actually form carbon-carbon bonds. And although it's difficult to be able to predict products for it, I've developed a method here that works for every single one of these um, types of problems that you're going to encounter. Now, these pictures here show that you can react um, Grignards with a, a whole host of different types of molecules. There's even more than this. The typical molecules you can react Grignard reagents with are epoxides, aldehydes and ketones, and esters. We're not going to talk in this set of videos about epoxides. That's going to be in a later playlist when we actually talk more about epoxides. But we're going to cover in, in this video aldehydes and ketones, and then in the video after that we'll look more at esters. Um, but I've developed sort of a foolproof method, rules here that you follow. I'll explain these when we actually look at the practice problems. And I guarantee you, you'll be able to predict products of Grignard reagents. And then after that, we'll talk about doing synthesis and understanding what reagents we'll need in order to form the appropriate carbon-carbon bonds. So first of all, I'm going to go over a very basic background here, and then we're going to jump straight into the problems because that's how you're going to learn. So we need two things to be able to do a Grignard reaction, at least if we don't count the epoxides, okay? We need a carbonyl-containing compound, such as an aldehyde, ketone, or ester. So we need a carbonyl-containing compound. And we need an alkyl bromide. So we need some carbon chain that has a bromine attached. So a good example would be ethyl bromide. We'll actually look at ethyl bromide in the practice problems. Not only that, so those are the two main things you need, but you also need some magnesium cation. Easy to obtain, easy to use. And the principle that we're going to look at in um, the practice problems is that the magnesium is actually, for some reason, there's a mechanism behind it, we're not going to worry about it, the magnesium can insert itself between the carbon and the bromine of the alkyl bromide. And that actually makes that molecule incredibly reactive. Specifically, it makes it nucleophilic. Okay, for all intents and purposes. I will specify this because it's very important. You cannot use Grignards with carboxylic acids. Even though a carboxylic acid is a carbonyl-containing compound, these do not work with carboxylic acids. Grignard reagents are actually very, very basic. Okay, that's what makes them nucleophilic. So if you have any acid in solution, meaning a carboxylic acid, the Grignard reagent will just pick up the proton from the carboxylic acid and it kills your Grignard. So for that reason, carboxylic acids do not work with Grignards. And also because you can't have any acid, these uh, reactions do not take place in water because obviously water has plenty of protons to give away. So actually, these are actually going to occur in diethyl ether, or some kind of ether solvent. The most typical one is diethyl ether. Okay, so that's just a little basic background. We're going to look at specifically aldehydes, ketones, and esters, specifically aldehydes and ketones in this video. Um, and we're going to jump straight into the problems now and look at these methods of how to solve these problems. Now that we've discussed some of the theory behind Grignard reagents and what they're useful for, Let's now develop some strategies for learning how to uh, predict products of Grignard reactions. Okay, I brought this out in the initial part of this video. All right, to do a Grignard reaction, you have to have two things. One, you have to have a carbonyl containing compound. Examples of compounds like this that will react with Grignards 
are ketones, aldehydes, esters will react. We're going to look at reactions with aldehydes and, and ketones here. We're going to save esters for a separate video because their reactions are a little bit different. Um, we're used to seeing esters being kind of the weird guy. Okay, So you need a carbonyl containing compound. There are other compounds that will react, but the simplest way to understand this initially is with carbonyl containing compounds. As we see more and more, we'll, we'll add to that. And then you also need a compound that contains a bromine, specifically an alkane that has a bromine attached. So an example is shown here. We have ethyl bromide. This is a great example. Um, below that we have isopropyl bromide. So just an alkyl bromide. Okay. Typically when you write a Grignard reaction, you have both your, your carbonyl containing compound, your alkyl bromide, and then you throw in magnesium cation. Okay. So, mechanistically what happens is the magnesium inserts itself between the bromine atom and this carbon atom to which it's attached. So what does that look like? Well, it sort of looks like this. The magnesium just kind of inserts itself between the carbon and the bromine. Okay? This makes this carbon right here very reactive. Okay, much more reactive than it was. Okay, so hopefully that, you don't really need to understand why it does that, but that makes this carbon much more reactive. Let's look at the other example, so right here. So if we throw in magnesium cation, then we will have the magnesium insert itself between this bromine and this carbon. Okay, so what would that look like? That would look like this. Okay, again, because this magnesium inserts itself between the carbon and the bromine, that makes this carbon very reactive. Okay, so let's take a look now at the strategies for determining which carbon atoms form bonds. Now, Grignard reactions are, are reactions that students often hate. They hate them because they always lose track of carbons. I'm really adamant about this, and I guarantee you it will help you if you do this. Always number your carbons when you're doing these reactions, okay? So what I want to do is I want to first number all the carbon atoms in each compound in the reaction, okay? Number all carbon atoms. So I've got these two compounds right here. Let's number the carbons. And it does not have to be in any particular order. Um, I typically label them left to right. One, two, let's call this one three and four. Okay? Now, let's go back to the PowerPoint strategy. Two, determine which carbon atoms should form a bond, specifically a carbon-carbon bond. You need to determine which atoms form it. Well, like we mentioned in the theor theor theoretical part of the video, the carbon atoms that form a bond are the carbon that occupies the carbonyl, this one, and the one that's been activated by the magnesium, this one. So in the carbonyl containing compound, it's the carbon that has the oxygen, and in the alkane with the bromine, it's the one next to the magnesium. These two atoms should form a bond, okay? So now I've designated carbons two and three should form a bond. You don't have to write this, but I'm just showing it to you. Step three is you want to redraw the carbonyl compound, but replace the carbonyl with an alcohol. So what does that mean? So I'm going to redraw this compound on the left, number one here, but I'm going to replace that carbonyl with an OH, an alcohol. That's what I mean. And remember, this is carbons one and two. And I know carbons two and three need to form a bond, so I'm going to connect carbon two to carbons three, and then that's connected to four. So three and four. And that is your Grignard reaction. This is actually the product of this particular Grignard reaction. Okay? Let's do a few examples. Okay? And you don't actually have to draw this alkyl bromide with the magnesium inserted. I just did that to show you exactly what was happening. But let's do an example. Suppose I have, let's say, this aldehyde right here. So here's this aldehyde. And let's say I have this alkyl bromide right here. Okay? I want to do a Grignard reaction. So typically the way we designate that is magnesium 
and it's in diethyl ether. So diethyl ether looks like this. That's the solvent in which this occurs. Okay. There's also technically a workup step where you put it in acid. So H3O plus. Um, I typically don't, if I'm just kind of showing you what this is, um, I don't usually put this, although technically on an exam you should put the workup step. All right, let's predict the products of this Grignard reaction. So what I'm going to do is first number my carbon atoms. This is the step, if you don't do this, this is the step where most people mess up. You need to number your carbon atoms. Let's just do it from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so you should know my final product should have seven carbons. Okay, again, it doesn't matter what order you put the numbers, all we care about is the connectivity. Step two, determine which carbon atoms should form the bond. Well, it is the carbon atom of the carbonyl containing compound, this one, and the carbon that's adjacent to the bromine. Now, I initially mentioned adjacent to the magnesium, but what would happen if we threw it in with magnesium, the magnesium would insert itself between the bromine and this six atom, and it would be the same situation, okay? So we need to throw, we need to connect the atom that has the carbonyl carbon and the bromine carbon, always these two atoms. So I'm gonna be connecting atoms four, and six, okay? It doesn't matter the order of the numbering, you just need to be consistent. What is step three? Redraw the carbonyl compound, but replace the carbonyl with an alcohol. So I'm gonna redraw this compound on the left and replace this carbonyl with an alcohol. Did I do that right? Let's make sure I numbered right. So I have four carbons, one, two, three, four. Okay, and the last step, join the two carbon atoms and fill in any remaining carbons. All right, let's do that. So four is connected to six, and then six has two coming off of it. So if I look at this, this connecting atom should be six, this one could be five, and this one could be seven. And this is my product of that particular Grignard reaction, okay? Let's do another example. This time, let's do a ketone. Grignards will also react with ketones. So I'm gonna use, actually this time, I'm gonna use acetone. And then let's pick, let's do a, a unique Grignard reaction. One we can actually do is, we can actually do bromobenzene. You can actually do this on aromatic compounds. So let's do that. So let's do a Grignard reaction. So step one, we have magnesium in diethyl ether. And then we're gonna have a workup step, so W, workup step, okay, to protonate the alcohol. All right, step one, what is step one? Number our carbon atoms. Again, it doesn't matter the order. One, two, three, all right? Then I come over here and do this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. My final product should have nine carbon atoms. Step two is I need to determine which carbon atoms are gonna form a bond. Okay, so it's gonna be this carbon atom of the carbonyl group and this carbon that's attached to the bromine. So I'm gonna be connecting atoms two and four in this case, okay? Step three, redraw the carbonyl containing compound as an alcohol, as its corresponding alcohol. So I'm gonna do this There's the corresponding alcohol. Let me actually put in these numbers, one, two, and three. And then I need to, if we go back, look at step four, join the two carbon atoms and fill in any remaining carbon atoms. So the two carbon atoms that need to be joined are two and four. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna go ahead and put four. And that's four is part of the benzene ring. So it's gonna be something like this. And I can go and make sure I numbered it right. I have the right number of carbons, so five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so this right here is the product of this particular Grignard reaction. Okay, 
So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching. Um, we are actually going to, in the next video, we're gonna look at the Grignard reactions of esters. And make sure to like this video and subscribe, and then we'll continue Grignards in the next video. Thank you.